Okay, we're going to get started with what to do first on uh, entering data, booking events, and how to uh, get all of your back data entered in effectively. <clears throat> um, the first step to entering your contact information and putting in past events is to uh, go to the account manager, which is where we enter the basic contact information for all of our people. Um, you will add an account for the company. It'll say prompt you here, click yes. Under client and organization, we'll put company XYZ. Uh, you can put address, city, telephone, and email. However, this is the general information for the company and rarely do we use it. We're more interested in this information for the contacts within the company. So once we have the company's name and we can find it and manage all of our contacts in there, we'll add one of our contacts. So by clicking this button, it brings up uh, the prompt to enter the contact information. So Smith, Jane, uh, don't need any of this, telephone, Tab. And perhaps the most crucial bit of information um, would be this person's email. I'm going to just put mine for the sake of doing it. Um, we've also added this tag in here so that you can um, look at networking events that you go to and just enter uh, all of the people that you meet at those networking events. There will be more information on that to come. Address down here would be specific to your contact. Um, I recommend entering as much information as you can on everyone. However, the most crucial pieces of information are going to be our contact's email and to make sure that we have their first and last name in the correct slots. We'll use these frequently when we are emailing the clients Excuse me, and auto-formatting the emails. Once I'm done entering the information, I click OK. Now if I have more than one contact, perhaps there was a booking contact and then a different on-site contact, you can just continue to add more contacts here. Joe Smith, don't have a phone number but I have an email. Click OK and you'll see, oh look, I messed up didn't put his name right. We can change that in here if I just go in and change that information here. I'll click save up top, save changes. So I've, I've effectively added a new client or organization, company XYZ, and when I click on that all my contacts show up in this location. Um, here's some other examples of ones that we have in. So you have several contacts, people booking multiple different events within each company. One thing to note is that you'll frequently have events that are booked by individuals that are not necessarily affiliated with a company. It's just a birthday party or bachelorette party. <clears throat> what I recommend you do is create a client called No Company. Uh, I usually put one No Company because this is alphabetical and that way it's always at the top. You click on this, you'll see a whole list of clients. Let me do that again. Over here. These are people that just didn't book with a company, they just booked individually. Um, I like to maintain them all together so for easy access. If you try to create a new account for each individual person, it'll clutter up your already pretty big client organization list. So I prefer to have them all in one kind of subfolder. And as you can see, well, we've been running the program about three months, the list of contacts grows pretty rapidly. Um, so everything's in. We've added our new company XYZ. When you're searching for it in here, you just can go to, no, can't do that. Go to company. XYZ. Sorry. Yeah. 
here. We've got our contacts. Everything's been saved. Now, the second thing you do will be to go ahead and leave account manager. I'm going to X out. And now we're going to go to um, either event manager or scheduler. Honestly, the easiest way to book your events is in scheduler. Bring it up real quick. Just a minute. So here you have our calendar. You go to a random day today. Let's see. Zoom out. Here you can see our events for today. We've got um, a birthday party. There's a another no company entered. This was a cancellation. That's why it's in red. Um, what we're going to do is enter. This is a closed event. That's why it's in blue. We're going to enter a new event based on what past data we're entering. So you can double click here or select new event. Bring this into view. All right, so we're going to look for our company XYZ. Start typing here, it pops up here. We want to know who the contact is that's making the event. So let's say this time it's Joe Smith. Click next. And it brings up all the general information that we want to enter. Uh, a party name is not necessary, although you can enter it if you want, uh, such as Joe's Retirement Party. Uh, you can select the sales rep for the event. Um, all of these categories that you see below here are things that we as a company have decided to track. And so it's extremely important that as we are entering data and moving forward with new events, we get as much of this information in as possible. Um, they each have drop down screens so you can kind of see what's going on. But let's say this is a retirement party for Joe Smith category. Uh, we'll say it's a social category, even though it's booked by his company. It's a social event, not a business meeting. The business type, well, let's say company XYZ is an energy company. Uh, the lead source, how were we contacted? Was it an open table inquiry or a regular website inquiry, a direct email? Um, maybe this was just a phone call. Conventions and events. Is this affiliated with any specific conventions or events that are going on? It is not, so I'm going to leave it blank. Reason for not booking. So this would be if we had an inquiry, however, they chose not to book in the future. We would want to know why, and if that information is available to us, we would want to include it here. Um, could be that the <clears throat> size of the room was too small and we couldn't accommodate the number of guests. Um, maybe they just canceled their event on their end. They're just not going to do it anymore. Or perhaps the price point wasn't what they were looking for. Networking events. Did we meet this contact at a networking event? If so, we want to be able to link that here so that we know and can track sales that we generate from specific networking activities. Email campaigns. Right now, we've just launched in two locations the December holiday 2016 email campaign. So we would want to know, is this person replying to our email blast? Did they hear about us and are they booking because we sent them a specific email? Um, so once you've got that info in, the next job is to just fill in the event details. So let's say they're planning for 15 people. I don't know the actual count. I'm not going to require a guaranteed count, although you certainly could. Uh, here's the date and the start time. That's all good. I don't need any of this other information. Sub-event information. These are also things that we're tracking as a company. So menu. Let's say I know he's going to do his menu, and let's say I know he's going to do our entry-level $65 set menu and he wants to do buy the glass wine only, or maybe um, he's pre-selecting wine in the 50 to $75 range. Description. Um, this is, honestly, 
not one that we use that much and I'm probably going to take it off. But if something is applicable in here, please go ahead and select it. Um, I don't see anything that's really applicable here. So I'm going to leave it blank. Type. Off-premise, on-premise. This is on-premise, but we don't track this either. I may just remove both of these from everybody's. Um, so this is pretty much all the info we need to get started. We hit OK. It's going to prompt us that there's a, a booking conflict that's by default in the program, probably because uh, we've set up the um, room sizes a little differently. So you can just click OK and move past that. Retrieve the event into the event manager. Yes. You can click no at this point and it'll still stay on your schedule. And you can go revisit it later. Um, but if you click yes, it'll get you in to finalize all the details of the event. Would you like to select menu items for this event? I'm going to click no. We'll discuss setting up menu items later. And uh, you don't have to have it to book an event. Um, what I really want to do once I'm in here is move from the sub event to the event. You see all the information that we entered earlier carries over. And I want to move to the status. So we've got a number of different status that an event can be. There's perspective, which would be if it's just a lead. Somebody either calls or emails and inquires about an event. Tentative would mean that um, they've decided to book and we're either holding the room for them or we have sent them a contract and are waiting on them to return it. Definite means that they have booked. Um, we've received the contract, everything's good to go. Maybe they haven't picked their menu yet, but it's a definite uh, booking on our calendar. Uh, and closed. Closed will be after the event, when everything's done and we've got the receipt. Canceled is obviously just that, canceled. So let's say we're entering back data right now. And I'm going to click closed. That means the event's already happened. Um, one thing I would do is probably go in and put the actual number of guests that showed. So they had planned on 15, but let's say only 10 showed up. Then what I want to add is the net spend. This dollar net spend is basically um, what uh, the total subtotal is for the event. It's what you get commission off of. And it allows us to track the expenses of all the events. So I'm going to say that they spent... $1,000. And we're good. If there's any recap notes that are relevant, you can type them here. And when you're all done, save the event. Okay. Click OK. Now when I exit out of here, and it lands back on my scheduler, you can see that I have that event. It's marked blue. It's been closed out. It's done for the day. And if I ever need to access it, I can just come in here and click on it. That is the two-step process, one, of making an account, and two, putting that account into an event in Cateries. Um, what we have found that works really well when entering a large amount of back data is to you know, take a stack, say your stack of December of last year, and go in and enter all the account, account information for everyone first. Um, and then once they all have accounts, then go back and enter all of the events. It uh, makes things a little more redundant. It's easier to train. You get a little practice in each without having to switch between the scheduler and the account manager. Hope this helps.